And so you're saying that there's a range of offensiveness, and if it's and if the signs are very offensive, no, no, I didn't. Arrested. What if the signs had said "back the blue"? Should he have been arrested if his sign said "back the blue"? So are you saying that a reasonable officer would believe that falling to the ground qualifies as using force against the peace officer? Are you planning to testify at trial in this case? Yes. Okay. So is it correct that your understanding of the facts is that Noel said, what the fuck to a citizen stopped at the intersection with his window rolled down? Yes. Was it reason, was it reasonable not to arrest him at that point? Objection form. I think the arrest was reasonable and I haven't heard or seen anything that would lead me to believe that an officer in his shoes, a reasonable officer would have not done the same thing. When Noel said what the fuck to a citizen, was there probable cause to arrest? That with the, the other circumstances, yes. Is it right that you think that Dial had the legal right to knock the signs out of Noel's hands solely to see the words that were on the signs? Legal right when it comes to an officer's discretion at a scene, um, that's, that's um, at the officer's discretion. And Did Dial have the I, don't, right I don't know what would be illegal about removing the signs for whatever reason, if they're there doing an investigation. Is it reasonable for Dial to have hit the signs to be able to read the signs? Uh, yes, I think it's reasonable that he knocked the signs if he wanted to read the signs. You think that Dial had the legal right to read the signs if there was no reasonable suspicion? Objection. Farm. But there was reasonable suspicion. So you're asking a question and you answered it because there is reasonable suspicion. And again, reasonable suspicion was what gave Dial the legal right to hit those signs. Is that what you're saying? Objection. Farm. Reasonable suspicion gave him the right to be in that position interviewing that individual to determine if a crime had been committed. Part of that was what the, how offensive the signs were. And so you're saying that there's a range of offensiveness, and if it's and if the signs are very offensive, no, no, I didn't. Arrested? Make, yeah, no, that's not it. No. Objection. Form. Isn't that what you just said? That he had the you didn't you just say that he had the legal right to hit those signs so he could read them to determine how offensive they are? Objection. Form. What I'm saying is he had he was there doing an investigation, and the, one of the points of the investigation was the complaints about the signs. Would it have mattered if the guy with his window rolled down didn't hear the phrase, what the fuck? Not for the probable cause of an arrest. I don't think it would matter. Um, but um, there again, we're talking about probable cause here and reasonable suspicion and what an officer does at the street level is based on their best discretion and so that's my answer to that but officers have to act in compliance with the law right they do and the law is determined by the courts correct objection Farm. Well, the law is determined by the courts, but an, an officer has discretion at a scene how to handle something with uh, an individual. Do you think that an officer determines whether probable cause exists? Objection. Farm. Well, that, yeah, that's 
that is that and reasonable suspicion is part of their uh, duties. That's how, what we're trying to do. Would the contents of the signs made a difference in this case? Quite possibly, um, you know, once they saw what the signs were saying and the people were complaining uh, about the vulgar language, and and so it was the totality of that. But um, they were there investigating complaints, and one of the complaints was is the uh, or the complaint was the signs and the vulgar language on the signs. What if the signs had said "back the blue"? Should he have been arrested if his sign said "back the blue"? Uh, I wouldn't think so. What if a lot of people complained about it that they were very upset? Then I think they should investigate. And they, they had, if a lot of people complained about that, then he had reasonable suspicion to stop and talk to that individual about it. So when does the arrest become justified? With um, the officer's observation of him cursing at someone stopped at a stop sign. So you're saying if the sign said back the blue, then people complained, then Winston Knowles cursed at somebody that was driving by, he should be arrested. Is that correct? Objection. No, I'm, asking well, if you, if, I'm asking you if you think that he should be arrested in that situation. I answered that by saying that he had, if a lot of people were complaining about the sign, that the officer would have a reason to go and talk to that individual. So if the signs had said back the blue and a lot of people complained that they were very upset, then he yelled back the blue at a passing driver. Is it reasonable to arrest? No, because it, it goes back to the statute and that's not what the statute says. What part of the statute's not satisfied if all he said was back to the blue and it upset people? Indecent, profane, abusive, or vulgar language. Couldn't that be abusive? Not to my knowledge. So are you saying Not that... Not in the examples of abusive language. <laughs> who decides whether a language is abusive, according the to the courts? Court? The courts. When they go to court, not on the side of the road, when an officer has got someone detained. In your report here, you cite the statute for uh, resisting arrest, T Texas Penal Code 38.03. What force did Winston Knowles use? 6'2", 300 pounds. When he's told to turn around, he's going to be handcuffed. He falls to the ground. So are you saying that a reasonable officer would believe that falling to the ground qualifies as using force against the peace officer? for transportation of the actor or of another. Correct, but it's got this final clause at the end, by using force against the peace officer or another. Force can be described, if he fell to the ground, he weighs 300 pounds and 6'2", he was using force to resist. I agree he was using force. Was he using that force against the peace officer? Against the peace officer from transporting him. Yes. I believe that's what that means. So you're saying that your understanding of this statute is that if you don't move at all and the peace officer wants to transport you, you have used force against that officer. If you're resisting. Right, but this statute defines resisting as all of these, these words here with the requirement that the individual has used force against the peace officer. Well, force could be also if, the, if they're resisting and standing still. Right, but I'm not asking you about the definition of force. I'm asking you about force against a peace officer. Well, I'm, I'm understanding your question, but force to avoid transportation of that person is, is force. 
is resisting. But the statute requires the use of force against the peace officer. Otherwise, it's not resisting. Is that, do you well, agree? If the, if the officer is attempting to arrest that person and they weigh 300 pounds and fall to the ground, they are resisting. So you're saying that even though this statute requires the use of force against the peace officer, you're saying that if the person falls to the ground, they're resisting. Absolutely, I'm saying that. Does this, does this clause, by using force against the peace officer, have any meaning to you? Does it have any? Yes, it does. It, it, it's a, a measure. Now, force doesn't mean hitting the officer. It's, he's resisting by falling to the ground. How did, he use that force? How did Winston Knowles use his force against the peace officer? The officer was attempting to put handcuffs on him. He told him to turn around and put his handcuffs, and he fell to the ground, avoiding transportation. So he didn't comply. And the officer was he would he didn't comply with the officer's order, and he fell to the ground and and resisted. He could have fallen into a hole, and that would have been resisting. Well, let's let's back up for a minute and talk about the your factual understanding of this case. Uh, could you tell me how you generated the facts? Objection. On. Can I tell you how I generated the facts? Let me rephrase. My, my apologies. Let me rephrase. Can you tell me how you learned the facts of this case? Um, by reviewing the documents that you're highlighting here, as well as watching the videos multiple times, talking to two of the officers, that's, that's pretty much it. Officer Short would then turn Otto's mounted camera away from the incident to protect his boss from having his disgusting behavior documented, while simultaneously depriving Otto of his rights to content gathering, including evidence of this crime that Officer Short was witnessing his supervisor commit. I'm not being disorderly. Okay. The tripods I used to see in are ones that hold shop lights uh, of some sort. Do you think that anybody would ever use a shop light outside during the day? Objection, sir. I, I don't know. I, I believe not, but I, I'm, not, I'm not everyone else. Did you ask Short why he moved the tripod? Um... I either asked him or he told me, uh, yes. And what did he say? He said that um, that they that he thought that the, that uh, the suspect was going to be arrested and that uh, there was an area by the tripod that was wet and muddy, and he moved it to the side uh, where he wouldn't step in the mud if he needed to assist. And so you're saying that it was reasonable him, for him to move that tripod to make space for him to assist? That's what he said, yes. And oh, and I think that's reasonable. Would it have been reasonable for him to simply step around the tripod and get closer? Well, if, he, if it wasn't for the mud, I guess it would have been, was his point. He moved it to avoid stepping in the mud if he needed to assist. But couldn't he have just gotten closer to the potential arrest without moving the tripod? Objection. Or I guess he possibly could, but he couldn't have stayed in the same position that he was in, observing the suspect. Did you ask Short if he knew what was on the tripod? Um, he told me that he learned later that it was a, a cell phone on the tripod. But did you ask him when you talked to him if he knew what was on it during the arrest? I believe he just told me that he thought that he saw it was a cell phone. He did, or that he he moved it at the time. He didn't know it was a cell phone, but um, I'm trying to recall. Um, 
he wasn't sure what the device, what it was, but he was just, uh, I think he told me he thought it was a light on a tripod. Did he tell you why he thought that? Having some technical. Well, it was on, on top of a yellow stand, which is something you would see a, a light on like that, a yellow tripod. Do you think it was reasonable that he thought it might be a light? I don't know what, I don't know. But yeah, I would say if you're there and you're watching a, a, a person and you're there backing someone out up, you're, you're more focused on that than you are an object uh, that's potentially in your way. Would you ever expect a person who wasn't shooting a video to have a light on them outside during the day? I don't have any idea. The report reads here that after looking closer at the device, he noticed it had a black case attached to it. Did yeah. you follow up with him about what he thought that black case might mean? Uh, I did because he, um, later on, he told me that he learned, and I think it's somewhere in my report that, uh, that he didn't learn till later that it was a, a phone and that uh, he didn't see, you know, he, he learned later that it was a phone. And the rest of it's down at the bottom there that if, if he was, uh, Knowles was videoing recorded by a patrol vehicle, he knew that Mr. Knowles was being video recorded by patrol vehicles, dashboard cameras at the scene, which is their policy. Um, and that the, you know, that the footage is always properly stored for recovery. Right, right. But I'm asking you about Short's understanding of the object that was on the tripod. Uh, it says... After looking at the device, he noticed it had a black case attached to it. Did you ask him if that black case changed his opinion about what that might be? I didn't ask him that question. So are you saying that he told you that he noticed it had a black case attached to it, and you asked no follow-up questions about that? Is that right? Yeah, I think he, he thought it might be a phone and but he didn't he didn't think the phone that it was re, uh, recording. Did he tell you that he thought it might be a phone? Let's see, I'm looking at my note at my report. Uh no, he later on he said when when I talked to him that it had been alleged that the device was a cell phone videoing location where Mr. Knowles was standing. Officer Short did not see any indication that the device was recording, but was aware that the contact with Mr. Knowles was being videoed and so forth. Do you think it was reasonable that Short didn't try to figure out what was on that tripod? Yeah, he's there backing up an officer and and uh, spending time on something that's remote. Uh, I think his attention should be on the on the officers and the suspect. But do you agree that uh, cameras are often on tripods? Uh, I know they are from time to time, but it's not always what's on a tripod. <laughs> but yeah. So you don't associate tripods with cameras, is that what you're saying? No. Not a construction, yellow construction tripod. I don't. I'm not sure if the officer did, but that's... Uh... If Short had known that day that that was a camera on the tripod, would it have been reasonable to move it? If it's getting his uh, access to the suspect. Even if it was a camera that was recording? You know, it would always be better if he didn't move it, if, there, if he knew it was a camera recording. 
I don't think we should do that. And why is that? Well, because it's it's if they're recording something, uh, they have a right to do that. If Short suspected that it could be a camera, but he didn't know for sure, would it be reasonable for him to move it? Objection, farm. No. So are you saying that if he thought it might be a camera, it would be unreasonable to move? Yeah, I would think it would be better not to, yeah. But would it be unreasonable to move it? Objection, farm. Not if it is impeding his view and progress toward uh, backup. So if the camera is recording, but it's impeding his mission to, to back up the other <coughs> office, it's reasonable to move. Is that right? Objection, Barn. I'm just saying there could be some circumstances where it was reasonable to move it if he knew it was a camera, but that wasn't the case. It's hypothetical. But it, but it could have also been reasonable to reposition himself without moving it, assuming that he keeps a s similar position. Is that right? You know, I'll just answer that by saying an officer has to do what they think is best when they're at a scene like that, and I think that's what he did without ill intent. So that's officer discretion. Who arrested Knowles that day? Well, clearly, uh, Mr. Clark did. So Dial did not arrest Knowles? No, he assisted in the arrest, but the arresting officer is clearly Johnny Clark. In short, did not arrest Knowles? No. How does, what establishes someone as the arresting officer? Mr. Clark was given the call first to respond to the call, told the person that he was under arrest, transported him to jail, did the arrest report and the offense report. Mr. Clark is the arresting officer. Even if Dial said, put your hands behind your back? It doesn't, yes. I, who put your hands behind your back and what is said is uh, Clark is by practice uh, the arresting officer in that at that scene. I want to ask you about paragraph five here from your report. It reads, in conclusion, the evidence I've reviewed overwhelmingly supports that a reasonable, prudent, and well-trained officer in the shoes of Sergeant Dial and Officer Short would have taken the same or similar action to arrest the suspect based upon the facts known to them at the time. Doesn't that mean that Dial and Short either took the same, you know, doesn't this mean that they arrested him? Well, they were part of the arrest, but they were definitely not the arresting officers. Are you planning to testify at trial in this case? Yes. Okay.